Shalom, shalom, everyone. Shalom, shalom. It's Hi, Yigita Mariah, and I'm back again with another DCB online class lesson. Give it all praise and glory to our fellow Yahuwah Elohim. Today we have Amaria, aka Zion Lioness, with her lesson on the word of light versus the world of darkness. I hope we all get a little bit of something from it, and we'll see you again when she's finished. Hallelujah. Amaria? Todah, sis. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and share my presentation. All right. Well, shalom, everyone. I hope you all are having a blessed and fantastic week. First of all, I'd like to give all praises to the Most High and thank him for allowing us to see this day and for his loving mercy and protection that he gives us every single day. Hallelujah. Again, my name is Amaria, and I am simply a servant of the Most High, just striving to please him and how I live my life. And I pray that Everyone listening desires the same as well, to grow and to continue to get better and better at serving the creator. Today, I wanna to share with you a discussion about the choices that we face in life. We know that the Most High has given us free choice and we're able to make good decisions and we can choose good paths to follow, but we can also make bad decisions. But it's ultimately all of our choices that we make that are gonna to lead to consequences. So the title of today's discussion that I wanna share is the word of light versus the world of darkness. And we're gonna talk about these two paths. Now, there are many, many things that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, but there are also things that we set for our long-term goals and our future plans but ultimately, it's all of the decisions in the now that will affect our future self. And I believe there are many people out there who are searching for what to do in the now. They're searching for where, where they belong, where they can thrive, especially our people. We've been stripped of our identity, our heritage, and we are completely lost. But I also believe there are people out there who are searching for the right path to follow in life. They're desiring to know what is the right thing that I should do. Well, the amazing creator of the universe has left us his holy scriptures to show us the way of life for all of mankind. Regardless of if you're a descendant of Israel, of, of Israel or not, this is the way of life for everyone. And Proverbs chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. This is the way of life, to follow the Most High's commandments, his laws, his instructions, and we're going to get into this today. But throughout this discussion, I want you all to visualize a concept. Visualize that you're in a really, really dark room, so dark you can't see your hand in front of your face, pitch black. So creepy and scary, right? But then a light flickers on in the middle of the room and suddenly you can see. That's what the word of the Most High is for us. There's so much out there in the world that is the darkness, but his word is that shining light, the lamp, the lamp, the gift that the Most High has given us to help us to navigate through the darkness in the world. So let's discuss and compare the word of the Most High versus the world. All right, I've created a diagram here, which is uh, comparing the word, which is represented by the light versus the world, which is represented as darkness in the scriptures. And these are some very general concepts and very general characteristics that we're gonna discuss here. But as you can see on the word side, from the word, we get much goodness by keeping it. We can also get guidance and clarity on a lot of matters. And we can also live in peace and harmony when we keep the Most High's word. On the other side, you have the world, which is represented by darkness. 
And there are lots of evils that exist in the world, lots of confusion and lots of destruction. So those are that's the very general comparison of the two. But in the middle, you see there's a little bit of an overlap. That is the gray area. There are things that we, we may do in life that don't necessarily fall into the path of the word or the world. And that's kind of where this gray area is. For instance, a lot of us, when we um, really, really enjoy a meal, we tend to overeat, right? Because it's so delicious. But if we overeat on a constant basis, that's when we can get into a problem. But eating in general is something that we got to do, right? That's how the Most High has created us so that we can eat the herbs of the field and the animals, and that's how we can grow and develop. But when we overeat is when we tend to get into a problem. So that's where the gray area is, where you have to use your judgment. So there are things that exist that you still can reason and gauge on how to make the right decision on the matter, but they don't necessarily fall, fall into either of these um, two paths. But the area of this diagram that we really want to focus on is the word of light. That's the path that we want to take because we don't want to be lost in that dark room. We want to be in the light. So let's talk more about the word of Yah. Looking at the first attribute that we discuss, let's talk about how the word is for our good. There are many, many scriptures that show this. And today, my amazing Ema will be reading for me, and we'll be reading out of the King James Version. So let's turn to the first scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24. And Yahuwah commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear Yahuwah our Elohim, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive, as it is at this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Most High has given us these laws. It says, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive. So it's for our preservation. It's for our good. Let's also go to Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 through 8. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we keep the most highest commandments, it says that he will make our way prosperous and we will have good success. You know, there's that saying that says, you know, you want to be living the good life. Are you living the good life? Well, you can be if you keep the most highest laws. And we're not to turn from it, like it says, to the right hand or to the left. We got to stay on this path and not deviate from it. And if we meditate there in day and night, it says that the Most High will bless us and we can be successful in life. So there's another scripture to demonstrate how the word is truly for our good. Let's also go to Proverbs chapter 2, verses 10 through 15. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh froward things, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked whose ways are crooked and they froward in their paths. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in the beginning of what we read here, it talks about wisdom, when, when, when wisdom enters into your heart. And from the Most High Scriptures, we understand that the fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom. So keeping his word is how you can obtain wisdom. 
and that when wisdom enter, enters into your heart and knowledge and discretion, it shall preserve you. So again, you're getting good goodness from keeping the most high's word. And it says to, in uh, verse 11, uh, understanding shall keep thee to deliver thee from the way of the evil man. So this goodness, keeping the most high's word is going to deliver you from the evils that exist out there in the world, which there are many, many evils. But if you keep his word, that knowledge and wisdom is going to keep you and preserve you from that. And also in this passage, it talks about the man who leaves the paths of uprightness, who was following the path of the word, knew the word of the most high and kept his word, but decided to turn from that path to the world. But what is he turning into? It says, those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they forward in their paths. So you're turning to the crooked paths, to the ways of darkness. And that is truly what we want to avoid. And when we look at life it's, itself, we see that the word of the Most High is for our good. One example of that is the holy days of the Most High versus the holidays of man. The holy days are commandments that the Most High has given us, days for us to observe, and they truly are for our good because we are obeying the Father, you know, keeping his commandments. We're also connecting to him. But there are days also that we're able to look at our history, at our past, and see how the Most High has redeemed us and how he has delivered us and, and how he has truly blessed us. So these are good days for us to, to observe. But in the world, you have holidays, which are associated with good feelings. But when you do some research and look behind the origins of these holidays, you see that there's a lot of paganism and evil perverseness. And truly, these are not, these are not days that you want to keep. So there's one example. And, and besides uh, the evil paganism you see in these days, these days are highly commercialized as well. And many companies are just wanting people to come and spend all their money. So it becomes a very stressful time. So it's truly the word of the most high that benefits us while the world does not. But another amazing thing about the word, word of the most high is that it gives us perception. It helps us to understand what life's really all about. The word of the most high allows us to understand what the right and wrong action is in life. And it's imperative that we understand that, you know, what is good and bad so that we can make the right choice. So with his word, we're no longer stumbling about, we're no longer lost because it gives us the guidance and understanding. So let's read some scriptures about that. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter four, verses five through eight. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahuwah my Elohim commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath Elohim so nigh unto them, as Yahuwah our Elohim is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here it's saying that others who are lost out in the world, who've chosen the path of the world, even they would see, wow, look at these laws and how much wisdom and understanding you gain from them. And when you keep them, you become a wise and understanding people. So there's truly wisdom in the Most High's laws. And when you read through them, you can see that. Let's also turn to Psalm chapter 119, verse 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light, 
It giveth understanding unto the simple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Most High's words, it says, it giveth life. It giveth understanding unto the simple. So even a simple-minded person can understand. Even a child can learn the laws of the Most High and gain understanding and grow in understanding. He doesn't make it difficult for us to, to understand. He lets us hear this wisdom and uh, lets us apply it to our lives so that we can become a wise person. Let's go to another scripture, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 18 through 19. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's look at the language here that Solomon is using. He says the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So the path of the just, that's talking about the people who chose the path of keeping the most highest word. It says it's as the shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. So imagine what your perfect day is. That's where you want to be, right? So that's the path that we should choose. But the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. And we see the wicked, those who are out there in the world, how they're lost, how they're confused and um, just constantly bombarded by distractions. And we see that nowadays. What's being pushed to the people mostly a lot of the time is just distractions to keep people in that lost mind state and to keep people confused. And speaking of confusion, in the beginning, we know that the, the Most High, sorry, created man and woman, and that a man would leave his father and mother and join to his wife, and they too would become one flesh. And this is how we would bring about, bring about new life in the earth, reproduction, new generations. And it's a truly a beautiful thing. But in the world, they've created this LGBTQ plus xyz because they're adding acronyms every day and it's just people oh one day i feel like this and next day i feel like that just utter confusion and madness people just doing what is right in the sight of their own eyes and how can you sustain life with that so it's truly the word the most side that we need to lean on for clarity and the last characteristic of the word of the most of the word of the most high that I want to discuss is how it leads us to peace and harmony. It's truly beautiful how light can spread throughout the room and brighten up a whole space. You may just have one light in the corner of your room, but it can brighten up the whole room. And that's kind of like how the word is for us. As more and more of humanity keeps his word and it spreads throughout the earth, we can live in peace and harmony with the most high in his creation. And what a beautiful sight that would be, world peace. So let's read some scriptures about how the word leads us to peace. Isaiah chapter 26, verses three through four. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in Yahuwah forever, for in Yahuwah Jehovah is everlasting strength, for he bringeth down them that dwell on high, the lofty city, he layeth it low, he layeth it low, even to the ground, he bringeth it even to the dust. So here we see, here we see that those who trust in the Most High and whose mind is stayed on the Most High, which what is the one thing that the Most High really desires of us? Our obedience. So when we trust in him and we're obedient to him, it says that the Most High will keep that man in perfect peace. All right, let's read another scripture, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the person who keeps the most high's law, it says, can achieve happiness. And a lot of people out there in the world are stressed out, they're depressed, they're anxious. And this may be because they're lacking peace in their life. So we need to turn to the word and choose this path. And we can have that happiness in our life. Let's also go to Psalm chapter 37, verses 37 through 38. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says to look at the perfect man and the upright man, those that choose the path of keeping the most highest word, and the end of that man is peace. So that's what we should choose. And some may say, well, no one's perfect. But in the scriptures, we have examples of Noah, who was said to be perfect in his, in his generations, and Job, who was a perfect man and an upright man and one who eschewed evil. So those are examples of people who we should strive to be like and being perfect before the Most High. And it says the end of that man is peace but the transgressors shall be destroyed together and the end of the wicked shall be cut off. And we know that the judgment of the Most High will be and is being brought to this earth on the wicked for their wickedness. And throughout history, we've seen how the nation of Israel, when they had righteous kings, rulers, judges, how there was peace in their days and they were following the laws of the Most High and it was a blessing to them. And that's what we want to return to. But we've also seen out in the world, the history of colonialism and how nations have come stealing, killing, destroying, bringing their disease and their false religion and how that's brought anything but peace to the world. It's brought destruction to mankind. So we need to turn to the word of the most high and, you know, Choose this path so that we can avoid this destruction and also the wrath and destruction of the Most High Yah. But overall, we discussed how the word of light is truly the path we want to take. The Most High's word is our light source on earth, and we get so many benefits by keeping his word. We make good decisions which lead to good consequences. We get guidance and clarity on how to navigate through the darkness in this world, and we can get peace in our lives and the lives of others around us when we keep his word. It's truly what separates us from the world, and we must avoid the darkness and choose not to follow this path. And I'm just so grateful that the Most High has given us this light to keep us out of the darkness. I pray that he is pleased with the information that I shared today and that it was according to his word and that was a blessing to all of you who are listening in. Toda everyone for listening in today and may the Father bless you. Shalom, shalom.